Hey, what's up? I'm gonna do a walkthrough through the 125 gallon rescape that I did yesterday. It is still a bit cloudy, but I wanted to get it out to you guys since I said I would do an update video. So let's walk through it. As you can see, a lot of rework. It looks pretty bare, but I'm getting fertilizers and other things to add nutrients to the water for the plants and help eliminate algae. So as you can see, in the left hand side, we have a pathway, which is kind of nice and then I created this hill like formation with rocks and sand so it's not going to create too much aerobic bacteria and the earth eaters should help eliminate that as well and then over here you can see I have another pathway in another hill um, and you can see this new piece of driftwood I've had it for a while just in the discus tank so I dried it out because I didn't want to risk contaminating anything so I dried it out and now it's being submerged with these rocks up here um, until it gets waterlogged. The tiger barbs have been moved down here for now with some African cichlids. The, the African cichlids down there aren't too aggressive. They're the OB peacocks. The clown loaches in here are a bit more skittish and because the tiger barbs aren't there to school with them, but that's okay. They'll come around. They don't really like a camera in their face. And then the mollies did have babies, which I was happy about. Um, so I left these plants up here for the babies to hide in, but I've been noticing all day today that the electric blue jack Dempsey, which I don't know where he is now, but he was up in there, I think, trying to get them. And the mollies were supposed to provide an extra little food source, primarily for the black ghost knife, which doesn't come out until I do water changes or at night. And yesterday he was getting in fights with the rainbow shark, as you can see over here. Beautiful fish. So the only new plants I have in here is this Bulbitis, which to me doesn't really look like Bulbitis, but I've only seen Bulbitis once, so either one could be mislabeled. Um, but it also is turning into its submerged form, so I'm still patient and waiting for that. These baby tears, I think they'll start going like crazy once I have fertilizers in the tank, and then I can remove it from the pot. I don't know if I wanna keep them in the corner, or if I want to put them on this hill um, instead of the dwarf sage I have over here, but it would be nice to have maybe have them all growing up the hill. The Colombian or black tip shark is more active now and is out and about, which I love because the, the tiger barbs were nipping at his fins all day long and he couldn't come out, but now he's really active and as you can see, he's up here in the front with the Geophagus wine milleri and the Bolivian rams. There is supposed to be four Bolivian rams. I believe I bought five originally, but now I own, oh, my bad. There are four. I actually have not seen the fourth one until today because they look so similar. So I always thought that it was the two females and the one male. And it's looking like to be three females or two females and one sub-adult. Two females, one sub-adult male, and one dominant male. As you can see, this one, um, I might have to remove and get him all healthy. He's, but she looks pretty okay. It looks a little concave stomach, and I don't like that. Like, while well, these guys look like they have like batches of eggs that they're ready to lay and their breeding tubes are down and they have been down I just haven't seen them spawn but yeah I definitely want to get more food to that uh, Bolivian ram but she might have some internal tapeworms I did do a uh, medication walk like go through for this tank but it guess it didn't work and I'll have to retreat her and I'll just remove her separately because nobody else is showing symptoms. If others show symptoms or I get new fish, I'll just treat the whole tank again. Um, sometimes the medications don't work the first time, so you gotta go do it a second time. The Placostomus calicos are in here. The, uh, I don't know if I've ever shown them before. They are pretty interesting. They're like a regular bushy nose Placostomus, but with like an orange seam. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of hard. Hi, Mr. Green Terror. He's doing really well, getting really big, really fast. Um, the Corridors are coming out as well. As you can see, there's the Electric Blue Jack Dempsey. And I think down there, that is where the ghost knife is, and he's laying with a clown loach. I don't know. I saw the tail of the black ghost knife earlier, 
So I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, they're laying together and it's a lot of fun. So uh, if you guys don't know what the plants are, oh, I did get a new plant. It's this mermaid weed or sawtooth hygro. It's turning into its submerged form. I got that. I have it in the discus tank and I really liked it. So I wanted to get some in here and here you can see the Cynodonus eruptus. He's pretty large. I've had him with other African cichlids, but he kept getting nipped at because I changed the rockworks in the other tanks. So he's in here. And then I have the Cynodonus angelicus and eruptus mix, but he's not showing here. And then I have the blood parrot named Happy by my mom. And because he was like a uh, yellow, very bright yellow, and now he's more of an orangey red. And then I keep saying he, but I believe it to be a female because it's not growing as fast and the fins are rounding out in the end. And generally with cichlids, that means it's a female. So when I talk about my mollies like feeding the black ghost knife, so molly is kind of like this, a little um, like genetically deformed and mollies that would raise up in here wouldn't be able to survive the black ghost knife or the other predators I have in here, which is kind of how natural selection works where the weakest ones will get picked off and then the strongest ones will grow up and breed and to survive. So, and it also provides food for the other fish in the tank, um, but it's just a natural way. Something you would have to do if you're gonna be a breeder anyways. So I don't know if you guys saw, but the Synodonis Angelicus slash Eruptus mix was there. The rainbow shark has gotten real big and nice and healthy fat stomachs. And then here, this Placosum is specifically that's underneath here, got inside my power head and I didn't realize that he was in there when I turned it on, I didn't see any fish and he got a little banged up. It wasn't too bad, I've seen him or her uh, around on other parts of driftwood and it was a cut, but it's healing really well, which I was happy to see. I see all the clown loaches over here. So yeah, that's a little breakdown walkthroughs through my 125 gallon tank. Plans for the tank, I don't really know what I wanna add. The geophagus will get big and I have to, and I wanna breed them, so I have to select a few that uh, I wanna breed and they have to be kept in groups. So there's not a whole lot of room left um, but I am doing large water changes and got a new system to do water changes. I can show you here, actually. This is gonna be the water timer because I was doing drip water system changes, which are, it's, uh, has turned out to be a waste of more water and money instead of doing water changes all at once because the water becomes part of the tank water and you have to change out a lot of water per minute like drips per minute and things like that. So I'm switching up the system and it should allow me to stock my tanks more heavily and feed them more heavily, but I don't necessarily want to stock them more because that necessarily isn't good and it could blow back on me if water change doesn't happen for whatever reason. But in here, I'm thinking angelfish possibly because I want to breed them as well and raise up their fry, but I do, I got six platinum angels from a store. Four of them did not make it through medications and just died from bacterial or parasitic. And I do want to quarantine all my fish. So the store was nice and did refund my money, but um, they're platinum angels and they always have died for me and have been really weak. I have two right now in a quarantine tank over there, but um, I'm just waiting. I, I, I'm going to be really patient and let them sit there for a while. Just letting, I don't put more medications in because I think that stressed out the other ones a little too much. So I'm doing smaller medication dosages just to make sure the parasites and bacteria does die and get out of their system. But at the same time, they're not getting too stressed. I did do large water changes. So I don't know if, what caused them to die, whether it was stress or shock. Angels don't really ship well and they were about a quarter size or less. And normally when you're doing that and buying them from a store, they're very, they get very stressed and they shed their slime coat, which can be very hard on them. So could have been my fault, could have not been, it could have been the angels themselves. Every time I've gotten platinums, they haven't done well for me. So 
That's why I want to breed them to make a very hearty line. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.